welcome to uh, Tarantula Time with um, me, Will, from Northumbrian Tarantulas. Today I'll be going through some um, sling care guide uh, for terrestrial and arboreal slings. Um, mainly, sort of, mainly ask questions that I see and I hear. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to help you. Like, uh, how do I know if my sling's in pre-malt? How do I um, feed them? What size container should they be in, uh, and what kind of care should I should I be providing for them? So hopefully this will help. Um, I'll be using my micro cam, so hopefully uh, I can get some good footage. Here's my little peak and Bradgy sling. Uh, he's arboreal, so we've got this bit of wood for him to climb, and he's got more height than um, leg span in there. So obviously you can move around a bit in here, but his main goal usually is to climb up there and web around there. As you can see, he's also into digging. You'll find a lot of that with arboreal slings. Um, they do like to dig at an early stage. Let's try and get a nice zoomy in bit of his bum. It was nicely stretched out for us. But unfortunately, he's not anymore. Um, so the key with arboreal slings is, I'll zoom out. As you can see, he's got more height than width. He's got a bit of substrate because again, I know they like to, to dig when they're little. Uh, they're very easy to feed. You just drop a bit of um, mealworm in there. Uh, they'll either eat it which is great and they'll grow or they'll leave it which usually means they're in pre-malt again i'll show you with some more obvious thing, uh, slings that are in pre-malt we can get a good little shot of in there Oop. see very pretty got the cute little paws right next one now for tight containers i use these little bottles that you get juvenile tarantulas in you can see they're pretty good they've got a little bit of ventilation at the top i'll explain about that size of holes in a minute this one's slightly different uh, that's piermia you can just see him i'll try and get him on the um, macro cam soon uh, slightly different same bit bigger bottle but again with something to climb on which he doesn't really need because he's got all that moss um, but yeah, they're all very similar because they're all very small slings. Even the the teacot teacotted kettle tea vegans or be vegans um, has got these little things because they're great. Um, these are really good for slings, in my opinion. Um, but if you haven't got any of these, I'll show you. Um, something different you can use as long as you adapt it properly all right this is my uh, Lassidor Parabama's um, enclosure that is not mold that is I'm a hundred percent sure uh, his or hers webbing you can see she's also been digging a little burrow she's closed it off which means uh, pre-mold hopefully but uh, I've used this enclosure because I've run out of the others. Um, and I've drilled in very small holes all around the enclosure just so you can, um, so it's got ventilation. We've kept the moisture very moist, not wet, not damp, just a little bit moist. So it's He's got something to um, to drink because most people recommend a water dish and so do I but I'm currently um, out of water dishes so as long as I keep it dry that's great it's in there somewhere right next well, I think I should explain um, see that compared to say that in there's the, the peas army um, that's huge for a little sling. However, I won't need to rehouse it for a while. It's got loads of room. It's got everything it needs in there. 
Um, and I've successfully raised one, two, three slings from slings into juveniles, just from giving it a too bigger enclosure. All you need to do is look out for it, know where it is, know what it feeds on, and make sure I can't get out through these holes. Uh, again, if the body of the tarantula can get through a hole, it's gone. You won't see it again. And because it's not native to our country, it will die. Now here's another sling. Um, this is a Carabina versicolor. Again, it's an arboreal sling. This lovely lady, she's got her water dish there, which as you can see, she loves to web up. She's got a pet roach down there. Hey, pet roach. Um, they're fussy eaters. She'll either eat it or she won't. It's not going to hurt her. Um, again, this is a big enclosure. She's molted three times in here. She, uh, she's a really happy little tea. Um, most people prefer side opening enclosures, but just for a little sling this big, it's not really worth it. It's she's so beautiful. She's blue. Oh, I'll I'll put a picture in there of her. Um, yeah, she she thrives in this, which is what you want because it's got cross ven ventilation. Um, it's got all the stuff she needs, and there's a naughty little mealworm she hasn't eaten as well. Girl, what are you like? Um, yeah, so again, this is an appropriate size enclosure for her. The next enclosure up would be what's in here with my uh, P. Metallica. That's out and about there. Uh, he's in here simply because you can open that door uh, of that plastic enclosure because it's not a very good enclosure. Um, so he's in here in case there is an escape because he's big naughty boy who need girl actually who needs um feeding or well, she did and then she's molted and now she needs feeding again which is great look at those yellows anyway this is a sling video not a poker that <laughs> a juvenile video right so uh, that, that's another different enclosure uh for slings i'll show you one more and then i'll try and explain how to tell if they're in pre-malt or not. So not all slings are created equal and this is my uh, Terraposa sling. Uh, Terraposa Sturmy, not Blondie. If it was Blondie it'd have no little um, little white dots on its legs. If it was uh, the other kind of Terraposa it'd have dot little white sleeves all over its legs. Now what's important with these guys is they have plenty of moisture. Not wet, again just moisture. So he's got lots of lichen to give him the the ability to be moist with his cocoa fiber thing. This is a big enclosure. This is what I give my juvenile formictopuses, my juvenile brachypelmas, um, just juveniles in general, minus the LP because he grows really, she grows really quick. Um, as you can see, that's not mold, that's her webbing. That's her burrow, and when she molts again, which is soon, because she is in pre-molt, I'll see if you can spot it too. She's got a very bald bum, especially from when I got her. She's eaten one mealworm. She won't eat any more. <laughs> she runs away from food now, which is, again, a good indication that she's in pre-molt. Um, so she's going to molt to that. She'll grow a little bit um, and then she'll be ready for more food. But again, it depends on the size of your sling. Because she's big, she gets a juvenile enclosure because she is as big as some juvenile other species. I'm not going to say lesser, lesser species because they're not. But because she's big, she gets a big starter enclosure, which again helps me when she molts, she's going to be big. And I'll need all the room I have to feed her, to work with her, and then rehome her. So this enclosure for me is perfect. So this is my Peas Army sling. Um, as you can see, he's got a really big bum. That's what you want, a really big bum. 
Uh, that means he's probably in pre-malt, or she's probably in pre-malt, uh, and that's evidenced by the uh, food there. Now I've left that food in there for, for a really simple reason. Um, I wanted to show you what happens if you leave food in there over 24 hours. That Now that mould can get on her. That mould will then kill her. So all you do is after 24 hours, I've done, done this on purpose again because I wanted to show you, you pull it out. I shall do that now because I can't do it one handed um, and then I shall turn the video back on. Now I've taken it out, there's no harm to it. Now this is a BP's army, again it's Brazilian blue, found in Brazil, moist substrate, not wet substrate, not dry substrate, moist. Um, and hopefully this little dude will molt soon. Uh, again you can tell it's in pre-molt because of the fact, one, it didn't eat its food and two, because of its big bum. I think we've caught something amazing here. This is the Peomia. Again, it's, a, it's an arboreal. Um, Starburst Tiger. It's currently molting. This is molting um, sack. So you'll find out um, as you go. They make a nice little bed for themselves to molt in. She's molting away, so we're going to leave her be. I put her on the on the bottom shelf, but I just thought you'd enjoy seeing that. She's just lying there getting ready to molt. That's so cool. Now this is another P Cambrajai. As you can tell, her slings they're gorgeous. I mean look at the bum. It's all black and grey and fuzzy and it's got a little fuzzy paws. No 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 don't no 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 don't go don't disappear. Stay here for me. But yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see by its big bum and stuff, it's doing re she's doing really well. She's webbed up. She's made dirt curtains. She's buried into the substrate, like I said they they like to do. But they're, they're funny little creatures. Uh, I discounted them because they weren't, say, as pretty as a... Um, Versicolor or an avicularia, but they are the they're stunning in their own right, and they're they're good feeders. I mean, some slings you drop stuff on the floor, they run away. Nah, she'll come up, tackle it, eat it, and you won't ever see it again. And even if she doesn't do it straight away, you'll come back and she, you'll find she's webbed up in a web and she's sucking away on it. So yeah, that's this is again another arboreal enclosure. As you can see, not much substrate, something to climb on and hide behind. And she's thriving in it. She loves it. Wow, this is my little Nandu Chromatas sling. Look at that, he's left us a present. Uh, we won't be feeding him today because, um, let's be honest, his fangs will probably still be jelly. Well done, little dude. I'm very proud of you. Uh, I'll get that out. So again, um, like I was saying, if it's arboreal, it needs more height than width, so they can climb up, they can hide, uh, they feel safer in trees, although some like to bury, so it's a bit paradoxical. Um, the terrestrial things, most of them love to bury. You may as well discount them as fossorial, which is the burying kind of spider, for about the first few molts until they get to about two inches which is five centimeters to, to most normal people. Um, and once they've stopped burying, that they come out, they display teeth when they're juveniles, mostly. They're, they do still like to hide, but they're, they're in a hide this time. They're not buried. What I mean by that is the court bark you put out, they'll either cover it up and live on top of it, or they'll actually live in it, which is always handy. Um, terrestrials, again, provide lots of substrate. I would say three quarters of those little bottles I showed you full. They'll bury into to the gradient they need of moisture. They'll molt, they'll come out, you'll feed them, they'll go down, they'll molt, come out, 
and eventually you'll find out it's huge and you'll rehome it. Fossorial, I have not much experience with fossorials. Um, I personally, I, I don't want a pet rock. I much prefer, um, to, I mean, some are gorgeous, like C, uh, the Vidium, um, baboons, spiders, things like they are gorgeous. I'm just not that interested in them. I'm more interested in nice, pretty display teas. That's why I've got tea vegans, pizamis, um, nandus, LPs, formictopuses, pamphobedius, tea stermi, and the the arboreals I have are C versicolors, um, P metallicas, cambragii, and some tigers. I mean. They are gorgeous. I mean, my, my juvenile um, P Metallica is gorgeous. But yeah, that's what I like. I don't like a pet hole, but I go near and it runs out at me and makes me question life. Right. All right. I couldn't go through it all and not show you how to set up um, enclosures. So this would be, is what I would consider a good um, fossorial setup for a sling. You can see, mainly full, uh, see the top of it, cool. Um, if I were to do terrestrial, bit lower down, and that is what I consider enough for an arboreal species. As you can see, yeah, just put a little stick or something in the top there, you're sorted. Um, it's... As for temperature, as long as you're comfortable, so is the tarantula. So anywhere between sort of 18 to 30 degrees C. Even here in the north of England, where currently it is snowing, inside the house it isn't inside the house it's 20 degrees C so the tar tarantulas are fine don't use um, don't use heat mats heat rocks heat lamps you'll just kill your tea and it's pointless with lower temperatures they're gonna molt slower they're gonna grow a bit slower but they'll live longer than say someone that keeps them on a, um, a heat mat and then they can they wonder why after five years their male has carked it or their female is stuck in a mall. Cool, again, cheers, bye.